Tandem Nomads, episode 185. People reporting a strong sense of purpose live longer, enjoy a 12% reduced risk of dying, and have better sex. I think that's pretty compelling. Hello, Nomad Nation. Welcome to Tandem Nomads, the podcast show and entrepreneurship platform where you can find great inspiration to grow a successful, portable business and thrive in your global nomadic life. This is your host, Emel Deregi. I'm a business and marketing coach and the founder of Tandem Nomads. Today, I want to talk to you about probably the most important thing that has driven me to create Tandem Nomads is that sense of purpose and helping people transform their purpose into a successful portable business. So if today you are itching and you're feeling like something is missing in your life, you want something more, you're not satisfied and wondering what could that be, that thing that can make you happier in your life and feel more useful, that you're doing something of impact, And if you're considering that that could be a business, this is your episode today. And in order to talk about that, I brought in my partying crime and lovely friend, (laughs) Sunday Bean. Sunday, so good to have you here. Are you ready for this ride? I'm ready. Are you ready, Nomad Nation? Yay! (laughs) So Nomad Nation, you can feel that energy. Sunday and I love working together. We've learned um, so much about each other's work, working with expat partners, trying to uh, find their own source of purpose and build their businesses. And we've been doing this for a couple of years together now. And Sunday is one of my go-to person when it's about helping people find their sense of purpose. So just an official presentation of who is Sunday. So she is an intercultural specialist and solution-oriented coach. She is a member of Forbes Coach Council and host podcast expat Happy Hour. She Sunday is also mother of two third culture kids and has lived overseas since 1998. She comes from the U.S. and has lived in Switzerland, Burkina Faso, and today she lives in South Africa. She has helped individuals from over 60 countries go through transition and change. Sunday also works with individuals to find more purpose and meaning as they face the challenges of living globally, mobile lives, as well as support multinational companies and NGOs to help their employees make the best, make the best of the move abroad and their time abroad. Oh, wow. Sunday, this is, you know, um, a very good compact description of who you are, but I'd love you to give us a bit of a sneak peek of what's happening in your life right now as we speak um, at this moment. Okay. Well, I'm celebrating a recent transition from South Africa or from Switzerland to South Africa. I was not stuck, kind of stuck in Switzerland. No one has any empathy for you if you say you were stuck in Switzerland because it's, <laughs> because it's such a wonderful place. But we ended up going to Switzerland in March um, to wait out the COVID peak and ended up taking much longer than we had anticipated. In that time, I slept on air mattresses and was in temporary guest rooms. My office became a bedroom or my bedroom became an office every day and uh, really had to adapt by doing homeschooling and running my business at the same time. Just one week ago, uh, I returned to South Africa and I'm so happy to be back to my office and to my home, to our regular routine. So there's we're constantly in transition, right? And I'm just transitioning back to what I would call normal life. I think that you're the living proof that it's possible to live a life in transition while running a portable business, even in chaos. So it has been mm-hmm. really <laughs> impressive to watch you do that on the move and between mattresses and different bedrooms. Um, <laughs> so I, we've been knowing each other for a long time and, and Sunday, I would love us to give a bit of a picture together of, um, who we're talking to in a way. And we know you and I have been serving a lot of expat partners who are looking to build their own sense of purpose on the move. Uh, But there's a lot of people as well who feel that need, especially now with COVID to to Mm -hmm. find their own sense of purpose, but also revenue nowadays on Mm -hmm. the move. I I think it's a dangerous time right now for people because there's this wave of uncertainty and people feel like, they don't dare plan anything, yet they are feeling lost. 
um, or feeling deflated. And I think when people are feeling lost or deflated and there's this climate of uncertainty, they think they shouldn't do anything. Mm -hmm right? Like it's a bad time to do anything. And I, I'm like trying to scream from the mountaintop saying, if there's any time to do something, it's actually now. Exactly. Thank you so mm -hmm. much for that. It mm -hmm. is now. So let's go into it. Why do you mm -hmm. think it's now? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, this uncertainty could be six months. It could be 18 months. It could be two years. And there's no way I'm going to wait around for two years and wait to see what happened. I just had a group who started with me through a program and they graduated on Tuesday and we just celebrated for them saying yes to themselves four months ago, because where they are now is completely different than they were four months ago. If they had just wanted to wait it out they would be in the exact same spot. And now they're in a completely different position. So because there's uncertainty, now is the time to act. The other thing I think from a, a perspective of transformation, I was just thinking about this today when I was running, when you are going through a transformative time, and I think globally we're going through transformation, we're in the phase that I would refer to as bug soup right? The caterpillar goes into the chrysalis and it completely <laughs> dissolves. And it's not even close to a butterfly yet. It has no idea what the patterns will look like, how big its wings will be. And it's kind of scary because it used to be this solid ground walking caterpillar and now it's bug soup. But we are globally in bug soup. And right now is the time for us to think, how am I built to reassemble to become an even better version of who I was, or just a new version, a fresh version of who I was. Let's not judge better, worse, different, right? Let, just where, who am I becoming now? And that all happens in bug soup. I love that. I love that. And I think I'm glad that we just jumped in right away into this topic because I do see a lot of expat partners in general, but also anybody right now who was working. I have, for example, a client who has been working with top executive C CEOs and, and C-level managers who were looking to change their lives. They were fed up with their jobs and mm -hmm. nine to five jobs, and they were ready to hire her to say, okay, what's my next big thing? Mm -hmm. And COVID came and it's like, nope, I'm going to stop. This is not the time for transformation. This is not the time for starting something new. And that's actually the message that we're trying to say. That's not true. You know, mm -hmm. that, that is not true. And the opposite uh, mm -hmm. during these times is actually where you can find their inspiration, especially if you want to start a business to find a relevant business idea right now, because mm -hmm. so many new needs are emerging new ways of doing business. And for those who want to build a portable business, it's never been a better time than now where any kind of service can now be turned into a portable business. And I think there's the level of insecurity that's happening with people who are on rotational corporate packages or in the foreign service, the things that they thought were a guarantee are no longer a guarantee. Mm -hmm. And the accompanying partner who thought they had the security might be feeling the rumblings. What if my partner loses his or her job? What if they cut some of the packages and we don't have as much financial security? Most of the accompanying partners that you and I work with are really smart, capable, qualified individuals who have put all of that on pause for their move abroad or to focus on their family. And all of that skill and talent and creativity is latent, waiting to come out and contribute to the family, to society, to a cause. And this exactly. is the rumbling, right? It's, it's calling it to come out. Exactly. I always say, I've heard so many expat partners telling me, you know, I've been... I've been moving abroad, moving the family, volunteering, helping out, mm -hmm. taking a few jobs. And now I wake up and I'm like, where did my life go? Because mm -hmm. there's always something urgent to do and to take care of for everybody else. But mm -hmm. then their own needs are always last. Yeah. And, and so I, this is something that I think both got us to do what we do today, right? Mm -hmm. Totally. <laughs> I can't tell you how it breaks my heart when I'm on the phone with someone and they're like, where, where did the last 10 years ago? Why didn't I do this 
nine years ago, right? I just don't want people to live with regrets. Yeah. And this crisis is not going to stop tomorrow. So waiting for it to pass is going to be another five to 10 years that as you're going to let train. So I think that's important. So before we go into a bit more practical guidance here, I know Matt Nation, I just want to invite you to go to the show notes of this episode where I will prepare for you a little quiz that's going to help you figure out if you are ready to start your business now. So it's a one minute test to take it. Uh, but if you are listening to this episode uh, during the last week of September, uh, beginning of October, I invite you to join us for a free webinar that Sunday and I are going to do on helping you and how to find the right business idea for you. So make sure to find all the information on the show notes of this episode on tandemnomads.com slash 185. And we will give you all the information on how you can join us for this webinar. And if the webinar is over, you'll make sure to take the test of one minute test that will help you find some guidance there. So Sunday, let's dive into this because we talked about the context that was very important for us to paint in which we are right now that does stop people from taking action and finding their own source of purpose. And you and I, I mean, the common thread between us is purpose. You do it for the holistic and life approach and you also help people start their businesses. I believe that business is also an amazing way to find purpose. Finding a great business idea is a way to find that sense of purpose. But let's back up a little bit and I would love to know from all the work you've been doing all these years, what is the key thing that you think that people need to understand where they feel itchy and they feel something is missing in their lives? Uh, where where do you, what do you want them to understand about that feeling and that search for purpose? Well, I think they need to understand how important purpose is for us as humans. We are programmed for purpose. You know, one of the, one of my episodes, I talk about how lack of purpose is life-threatening and that's actually, it's an exaggeration. It's a, from the research of Victor Stecher and he talks about longitudinal studies over 14 years of people with a strong sense of purpose versus a weak sense of purpose. And it impacts our health. If you have a weak sense of purpose, it's as bad as being sedentary or a smoker, right? It impacts our relationships. It impacts our sex life. It impacts our happiness. So do not diminuate the hunger you have inside for purpose. And I know that in the global context that we live in, when especially if you are living a globally mobile life and you have the luxury of choosing where you live, if you have the luxury of living abroad, even hopping in the airplane, I understand that we hold massive privilege in comparison to people globally. And I'm not, that's not, that is something important to recognize at the same time. If we have access to privilege and resources and we're not with living with purpose, we are actually robbing people of our skills and talents and the impact we could create in our communities or fighting for a cause or, you know, raising children that are going to be the kind of citizens that are lacking today. So there's, we, no one gains by us not diving into a sense of purpose. I think that's really important for people to understand. This whole thing about being a parent and a mother, uh, that brings a lot of sense of purpose at the mm -hmm. start. Why is it at some point that we feel like it's not enough? And, and I see a lot of moms especially feel guilty mm -hmm. that they feel that way. Um, right. So any insights you have about that that can help understand what's happening in our brain that suddenly we feel, I want something more and I don't even dare to feel that way. And I feel guilty about it because I yeah. live an amazing life and I should be happy. Right. And I mean, you would get stoned alive if you said that it's not enough, right? Like it's just not something socially acceptable. Um, and because also children are a gift and they're not always a choice. So I, I want to recognize that at the same time, when we're talking about how people are designed, you know, I'm, there's a book I'm reading from Bruce Feiler, Life is in the Transitions. And he talks about how people are driven by A, B, or C, A being agency, B being belonging, and C being a cause. So belonging can be your circle, your family. 
right? So we get purpose through belonging in our family and through our children, but that's not the only way we draw meaning from our lives. We are multi-layered individuals, and this is where I get frustrated. Yes, I'm a mother, but I am more than a mother. I am a mother and... Right, I'm a mother and I'm this and I'm that. And we are multi-layered. And some people access their identity through one or two layers. And, but there are many, many people who enjoy living out those multi-layers of their identity. And so agency is one. It is what I am doing in the world, what I'm creating, my art, my skill, my competencies, right? B is belonging. That's where the family or your community and C is a cause. And that go, that's so connected to purpose, right? What, what is, what's the skill that you want to be doing or what is the cause that you want to impact? Again, it's also connected to business too. Mm -hmm. um, but w this is human. This is being human. And if society tells us, you know, you should only, you should be happy with that one layer of your identity. I'm going to push back on that because we're more multifaceted than that. Amen to that. I mean, this is <laughs> so good. So we just identify the importance of purpose in our life. And it is normal that we feel we want more because that's how we are built as humans. And actually pushing back that need of purpose is actually dangerous for our lives. We got it. And I think this is important to understand that it's okay and it's actually mm -hmm. good and healthy that you were looking for purpose. Mm -hmm. So now that we, we are there, we understand that's okay and that's actually good. For those who are stuck in finding that purpose, where to start? So I would, I would actually remove the phrase um, to find purpose mm -hmm. and because I feel like it gives us this idea that we have to look for it and if we don't find it, we've done a bad job, right? This idea of a needle in a haystack. So instead of looking for it, I start one step back and I say, where do you want to make an impact? Like, do you want to make an impact in, in your own family, in your own life, in your health? Do you want to make an impact in your religious community for a social justice cause? Where do you want to make an impact? Where do you want to make something better? Mm -hmm. And that helps people sort of experience purpose exactly. by making an impact. And I think that's the big bridge between uh, finding purpose in life and actually turning it into business, because that's mm -hmm. the first question that I ask my clients when they're in early stage is where do you want to make an impact with your business? So I was wondering about, you know, the size of impact. Like that's one thing sometimes that maybe freezes people is that size of impact, wondering if they are built up for it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have any insights about that. Well, the thing that's popping up for me that I can't ignore is, you know, oftentimes when I work with people, they end up coming up with a business idea and then they're in a position to go out, create it and then market it and do all those things. But before that, there's a lot of work that we do on self-worth and self-confidence. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do the work on your self-worth and self-confidence, it will automatically impact what you're going to end up doing, right? The impact that you say you can make in your business or in your community, because if you're feeling small, then your goals will reflect that. You, you won't, you'll say, who am I, you know, to make a difference? How could I make an impact? But once you get really clear on your competencies and, and have confidence that you're capable of doing something, you give yourself more room to, to make an impact. And I don't want, I really don't want to give the impression that bigger is better because that's not what I'm trying to say at all. Um, what I'm trying to say is if you are operating from a place of low self-worth and low mm -hmm. self-confidence, you're not even going to give yourself a chance to think about any impact. I've seen some people actually building up that confidence by starting a mm -hmm. business. I remember speaking at an event and a woman came to me and she was like, oh, this is amazing. This excites me. I could start a business, but I'm not built up for this. I can't do this. Mm -hmm. And I just told her, just try. Like, mm -hmm. you will not know if you can't do it if you don't try. And then I've seen her build her confidence 
as we start working together and she started building her business and seeing the impact of her business. I agree with you in terms of the action. I never thought I could have my own business, by the way. Oh. So my husband always said seven, seven, eight years ago, he said, you know, you should start your own business. I'm like, no, I'm not cut out for it. Right. And it was, I followed the quote from Adrian Dorison. She says that um, most people think that you have to feel confident and be clear in what you're doing and then you'll take action. And it's actually the opposite that action creates mm -hmm. clarity and confidence. Exactly. Right. I love, I love that quote from her. Um, so what's the common thing? I think it's baby steps, these small wins. So you, you, it's like coaxing out gently. Um, what do you want? Like, what are some things that you, you might dare dream for? What might be a place you want to make an impact? You're coaxing out purpose. You're coaxing out impact. You're coaxing out what they want. And then you're coaxing baby step one, mm -hmm. baby step two. And then you get that small win, that little excitement. And that's what builds the, the confidence as you build your competence, those little wins. I love that. Yeah, this is so good. And by the way, Nomad Nation, a quick reminder, if you want to take that first step, make sure to join us in our webinar because we will take you through that first step and how to do it. And it's a free webinar and all the information are on the show notes of this episode on tandemnomads.com slash 185. When do I get to turn the tables on you, Amel? Because I have some questions for you from the business side, from <laughs> the purpose that. side. <laughs> Let's well, listen, because I feel like for those of you who are listening who don't really know Amel and I's work very well, there's times where I'll work with someone and they'll actually then go with work with you or they'll work with you and then they'll come work with me. We, we have this interesting sort of synergy how we work with people and where we offer our unique contribution, right? So I love, so tell me what you think. What is the relationship that you see between how strongly someone has a sense of purpose and their business success? Yes, I love this. And I do, this is everything I believe on. And actually the motto of Tandem Nomads is turning challenges into opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I do see our own challenges, but as well as the challenges we see in the world and around us, uh, how we can turn them into an, a, a, an opportunity to make an impact and an opportunity to build a business too and create our own source revenue. So I think that's the big uh, overall like bridge for me between purpose and business, because even when I coach my clients and teach them through my online courses, how to build a portable business, the first thing we work on is what problem do you solve? And I think that brings sense of purpose. Like it, it's about being mm -hmm. useful and, mm -hmm. and actually the way you can be useful in a business is, and successful more, most importantly, is by identifying what problem you want to solve. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is, okay, once you identify the problem you want to solve, you need to be really good at explaining what is the promise of your business and what is mm -hmm. the results you can provide. And, and a lot of business owners know exactly how to solve the problem. And although they, where they struggle is more how to explain it. And that's mm -hmm. also where I help them. At the end, the result is actually the impact. When you can deliver uh, result through your business, you're actually making an impact. And for me, that's very much related to purpose because for me, purpose is about making an impact by solving a problem. Mm -hmm. And those are the pillars of any business. But now if we just take it a one notch higher as a business, even if we're a small business owner, even if we're a freelancer, if you don't know what is your vision, what is your mission mm -hmm. and what are your values as a business, mm -hmm. your big why, actually there's a great book from Simon Sinek called mm -hmm. Your Big Why, I'll put it in the show notes episode, as well as the book you mentioned, um, that really insists on the importance, if you wanna be successful in business, you need to understand what is your big why. Mm -hmm. And that is an individual thing. That's a person thing. And, and finally, we go through ups and downs, even in business. And if you're mm -hmm. not secure, and if you don't have clarity around your mission, your purpose as a business, you will not be able to go through crisis. You will not be able to go through challenges. Mm -hmm. That is what will hold you up to go to the next level, but as well as making critical decisions when you have to. 
the yep. biggest skill of an entrepreneur is taking decisions mm -hmm. in, in, in mm -hmm. certain times. Mm -hmm. And you cannot take decisions if you don't know where you want to take your boat. You totally. need to know where the boat has to go mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. you can make that decision. So, yeah. That reminds me of when you and I talked right after there was the uh, terrorist attack in Burkina Faso and you asked me how I made the decision to go and I said it was based on values. And it's when you make those decisions in your business based on your values, you can take it to the right thing. I wanted to say something from the personal side. You said about your big why. This is where it, it interacts with the individual and their own personal development because when you wake up in the morning and you're feeling self-doubt or your self-worth has taken a hit and or you're like wondering if it's ever going to work out, I don't know about about you, but the first few years of my business, I really worked hard for really crappy money. <laughs> And it was like, geez, when is it going to pick up momentum? When is it going to finally work out? I remember feeling that, that self-doubt, like, is this really going to work out? You need to know, you need to have something else to get you up that day and to get you in the chair and to do the right thing because you're going to have times where it's really hard, right? Oh, yeah. Sunday, you and I have been helping uh, one of our uh, dear members of the Business Idea Accelerator. And I remember mm -hmm. she said, oh, my God starting my business through this program that we did together has made me a better mom. Mm, I got mm -hmm. shivers when she said mm -hmm. that. Yeah. It's like a spiritual experience. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cause you're, you're just, and, but I, it is worth it. It is totally worth it. I, I don't yeah. want to, people to think that be daunted by it, but it is yeah. worth it. It is worth it. So I have, a, I have a couple more questions about this because what I see, one of the things that you said is about the problem that they solve. And here's a mistake I think people make when they decide, you know, in my process, they'll say, I want to have my own business. And what we've been doing up until then is helping them solve their problem. They're looking for more purpose and meaning. They're creating more boundaries in their life. And we didn't discover it was a business until who knows when, you know, in, in the process. So now they, they've been in this mindset of I'm going to solve my problem and I'm going to do what I want. And this idea of it's a hard shift for them to make. Well, what do my clients want? Mm -hmm. And what problems am I solving for my clients? So the, the classic one is coaches. I'm going to coach and I'm going to sell coaching. And I'm like, nobody wants coaching, right? <laughs> nobody says, I want coaching. No, people want their problems solved. Amen to that. <laughs> I'm so glad that you brought this up. I think it's really important that we understand what is the problem we want to solve because it will make us a better marketer. Marketing is not about selling yourself. Marketing is about explaining to other people how you can be at service to them and what is the problem you can solve for them. But here's the dilemma that I see with my clients. It's a little bit the chicken or the egg because they say, I want to start this business and here's how I want to help. And then I say, well, who are your ideal clients and what do they want, right? And they haven't done the work to understand who their ideal clients are and to really learn from their perspective. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I feel like I can, I do a better job marketing seven years in my business because I have so much experience working with my clients. I'm listening to what they want, exactly. but it took me a while where I wasn't listening, you know? <laughs> yeah. So here's what I think. And, uh, and that's what I tell my clients often when they get confused, lost or overwhelmed or stuck with their business, usually it's because they actually got disconnected from their purpose because suddenly the urgency of making money is what's mm. driving their decisions and their, the way they, the actions they take. And mm. I always say, if you are connected to your purpose, you will be willing to listen carefully and listen more and talk. When mm -hmm. we start a business, we think it's all about presenting ourselves and talking, talking, talking and selling our thing. No, the key of marketing and business, a good entrepreneur is somebody who can listen mm -hmm. and have a big sense of empathy as well. Yep. And you know, as a business owner and a marketer that you've succeeded when your clients still tell you, oh my God, you're mm -hmm. in my head. Yep. And, um, and for that to happen, you need to be really reminding yourself constantly why you're doing this. What is the impact you want to make? And mm -hmm. if you, and you need to be super curious. And the only reason and motivation to be curious in life is when we actually care. 
Mm -hmm. I always tell my clients, I'm like, you have to get over yourself. This is not about you. (laughs) I'm like, it's about them. Like, don't you get over yourself because it's actually you're out there with a bigger mission to help them, right? We always get worried about what will people think or is it good enough, right? And I exactly. (laughs) So, what do you think is, um, when people are in that process where they have an idea and they, they want it and they're kind of have the butterflies and they're excited to maybe make it happen to where they actually bring it into reality, what do you think is the biggest shift that they need to make so that happens? The, the biggest thing for me that I see, uh, it took me many years to share the message that starting a business is the solution to finding a purpose and building a career on the move. Um, and I was really happy to see a shift in our economy and our societies that a lot of more and more people would start their businesses. The problem is that they would not, they would just like start whatever they can do and not think about the big picture. And that often leads to failure because the mm-hmm. business is not aligned with who they are and what they really want and what is their vision. First of all, as a person and then as a family and as a family goals, you need to know what are your what is your vision? Although vision is not stuck, you can change, Mm -hmm. it can evolve Mm -hmm. and it's okay, Mm -hmm. but you need to sit down and think about that. And one of the very pragmatic examples is when I see expat partners and people in general start a business locally, knowing that they're going to have to leave in two or three years and not making it portable. And then they put all this work and energy into Mm -hmm. building a business that at the end they have to leave behind and we're back to square one. Mm-hmm. And they feel deflated. Exactly. So, mm-hmm. and, and then it's discouraging and it's basically the same, back to the same story. And the second one is, that's why I call the show Tandem Nomads, by the way. Uh, this is a team deal. Mm-hmm. Is a team deal. You cannot <laughs> succeed at this if you don't build your support system. And mm-hmm. a lot of expat partners do this in the corner at night when everybody's sleeping. They barely talk about it to their families, barely mm-hmm. talk about it to their kids or their partner, and then wonder why they can't keep it up. Because right. Nobody knows about it, and and the partner doesn't even know how important this is for you. Right. And my, my experience is actually when they do find out, they're actually really supportive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm going to go off uh, here a little bit. And it's <laughs> <Please> actually. Do. <laughs> Please do. It's, I know. <laughs> here it goes. I know. No. I know. Go ahead. <laughs> what I think is, this is why it's so refreshing what you do. And what I love about BIA too, of the Business Idea Accelerator, that when we work together is that it's more holistic. Because I think what when you go online and you're looking for marketing advice, what you often see is what they call bro marketing. (laughs) And it is so anti-holistic. It's so anti-feminine. It's so not inclusive of families. And it makes me crazy because it's like this 23-year-old guy in Bali who doesn't have a partner or kids or any other responsibilities. And he's talking about time management. I'm like, thank you very much. You want to start talking to me about time management, right? Like, <laughs> you know, and, um, and what I love about what you do is it's, it's way bigger than just grow your list convert clients. It's really embodied, right? There's so much alignment that you teach about saying this has to be part of you and part of your life and fit in your life. And I think that's what you do. That's refreshing. I'm so here. Thank you, Sunday. Mm-hmm. And I feel the same way. And I think that's why we, I mean, I love the impact you're making for people to realize these things too. And, and this is why I always wanted to work with you is we need somebody who can also help ask those questions there. Are, there's some work to do mm-hmm. before even starting a business. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. that's why I think we were a great pair here because you do mm-hmm. help a lot of people understand the confidence, for example, and mm-hmm. deal, with, deal with all those doubts so that business can become successful. So thank mm-hmm. you for that. I'm really excited <laughs> about this. <laughs> So sweet. But I think it's like, it's like trying to get, you know, Cinderella's glass slipper on, you know, the wicked stepsister. You can't put that form of marketing on a person who wants to live in alignment and live on purpose. That's why I love right? you. This metaphor is, I mean, how many more do you have in your bucket? You're Cinderella, darling. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going to be your fairy. <laughs> <laughs> fairy godmothers. Your fairy godmothers here. I love it. Okay. I have um, one more question. Yeah. One more, and this is kind of a controversial question. I don't mean to put you on the keep, spot. Yeah. Keep it, keep it in mind, please. I just want to very quickly, because that is now like more pragmatic, but still one thing that I see a lot of people like do when they think about starting a business is going into investing in a website and a logo before even they did their market research. And this makes me super crazy. So, and this is something that we will talk about in the webinar. It's so important. So I just want to put it there. Your website and your logo and your business card does not make you have a business. That's the last mm -hmm. thing you will do. I just did my rant. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but people are seeking validation. They want that card. Um, okay. So do you think that every sense of purpose can be or should be turned into a business idea? Oh my God. This is such a good question. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, I do think that purpose can come from other things. Um, like you know, some people just are okay with having an NGO and not making money. And this is why I think the big why is important to figure out if you want to make money. Basically, the difference between a purpose that turns into a business and a purpose that does not is thinking about how you can as well be served by your business by creating a source of revenue mm -hmm. for yourself. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the big question is, do you want to make money? And do you want to... Uh, create your own source of revenue. If it's the case, then I invite people to think about how you can combine that because you need that. But even when you transform your sense of purpose with a business, it doesn't mean that you can't do something else that feels meaningful and purposeful as mm -hmm. well. It's mm -hmm. about, I think you're the one, who, I listened to your episode. Oh, I love that one, by the way. I'll, I'll put in the show notes on being whole, you know, mm -hmm. feeling whole. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we're not we're multidimensional and mm -hmm. it's not because we're looking for purpose that it can only be a business. It mm -hmm. can be a business and something else. And right. by the way, this is okay. I'm going to feel very vulnerable, but I need to put it out there. I try to be as transparent as possible sometimes, actually all the time, but it's hard. Is <laughs> one thing that I found dangerous right now, my sense of purpose has been very much entangled in my business. Mm -hmm. Everything, like I live, it's my passion since the age of 14, entrepreneurship. I've been starting yeah. my first venture, I was 14. And mm -hmm. it was a social entrepreneur, uh, your project. For me, social entrepreneurship is my thing. Um, but the danger with that is that it becomes the only thing and you have no more outlet to actually also get inspiration somewhere else, have a break. Mm -hmm. Because if you're always into it, it's kind of dangerous at some point. So that's something that I'm constantly working on it. I have not yet found that way to, I'm always drawn back to my business mm -hmm. when I try to mm -hmm. develop a hobby or something like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Purpose does not only have to be a business. However, I need to say one thing because I worked with a lot of people also who started NGOs, for example. Even if it's a nonprofit, you need to learn how to run it as a business because for a run nonprofit to be sustainable, you need to think about how can the nonprofit be financially sustainable. And those are right. the same principles as a business. So totally. that's another side, side note here. Amel? Yeah, I ordered um, <laughs> so I ordered some pens and some some fancy paper on Amazon because I I'm like I don't have poppies. <laughs> Me too. I did the same thing. It's so funny. I, I run, I run, but that's for my health, right? And I read voraciously, but it's all nerdy stuff that's always for my business. I'm like, I need a hobby. I need to do something. Based it's not work related. Oh my God, Cindy, we're talking about this on the podcast, but I just <laughs> bought, how do you call them? The craft albums where you do craft, handcraft. <laughs> oh my God. I'm going to send you a picture of my first drawing. <laughs> Oh my God, this is so funny. <laughs> this is when two people who are passionate about purpose just go a little too far. <laughs> Listen, I wanted to say something else about money. And I know we've done a, a show on money mm -hmm. and there's a lot of shame around money. And, we'll put but that, yeah. But here's the thing. Um, so people who know me know that it's important to me that my business is a business and not a hobby. And I'm unapologetic about that. I've tried hard to speak more publicly about the role of revenue in my business and, and share that because I don't want to feed into the shame around money. And I also battle because I'm from the Midwest and the, in you know, the U.S. and 
my father would never say how many head of cattle he had because he was worried that people would calculate how much money he has based on how much every cow is, right? It's really funny. So I don't like to say how much revenue I make. But what I am proud of is that my work um, gives work to five other female entrepreneurs. Exactly. So it's not about money, right? And one thing that people don't realize is when you bring in a lot of revenue in your business, you also put a lot out to other people, but it's making an impact, not just in your life, but other people's lives. Exactly. So when you, I just, I'm saying that is if you get tied up around money and that feels icky and you've got shamey stuff around money, if you can connect it back to purpose and impact, that can help keep you going further because if your business is healthy, you can then employ other people that you want to support that are doing their passion project or purpose. I love this so much. I love this. And I hope nomination you're listening to this because this is a very important point here. The, the purpose starts becoming bigger and more impactful when you're actually mm -hmm. making an impact, not only for you, but your clients, your, the people mm. you employ. And it's funny that you say that because one of the, I've had many episodes about this, um, especially during now the pandemic and the crisis, the economic you know, consequences. By starting your business, you are actually contributing to the economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And second, you're contributing to your family as a backup plan. And I mm -hmm. think that's the mindset shift I'm trying to make into Tandem Nomads to actually embrace that responsibility and not make you be afraid of it. And that's where right. some people stay into hobby mode instead of transforming their business into a real business that makes money. Right. Totally. And you're, you're so, and the thing is, is I think people are underestimating how capable they are of it. Exactly. It's yeah. like, if I can do this, anybody can do this. Yeah. So, so nomination, if you want to know how you can get that, uh, take action and work on that, make sure to join us. If you're listening to this episode, uh, late September, early October, make sure to join us into our webinar. And if, if you've listened to it after, then I will make sure to have something for you on the show notes of the episode, this quick test on tandemnomads.com slash 185. We hope to see you there where we can help you uh, figure out how you can find the right business idea for you. Not any business idea, but the one that will make you feel full, whole, meaning um, living with purpose and meaning. So Sunday, before we end, what is the last word you want to finish this episode with? Oh, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think when I think about this whole episode, I always talk about the pillow test. Mm -hmm. When you go to bed at night, instead of the to-do list, the scratch test, what did you do that day? Scratch, scratch, scratch. Think about the pillow test. What do you want to say by the end of that night, how you spent your time and effort? If you're spending your time and effort scratching off to-dos or spending your time and effort building something purposeful, you won't regret it. Exactly. Amen to that. Thank you so much, Sunday. I'm having every single time so much fun with you that I struggle to end the episodes. <laughs> Thanks so much. My for face hurts from <laughs> smiling. <laughs> oh, it's such a pleasure to have you in my world. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Sunday, for all your great insight. And you are such an amazing, mm -hmm. um, inspiring coach. I've learned so much from listening to everything you talk about on purpose. So I really want to thank you for that. Same here, darling. Nomad Nation, you can find all the information about Sunday Bean on sundaybean.com and make sure to check out her great podcast called The Expat Happy Hour. You can also join us in her Facebook group, Expats on Purpose, where she shares every week some great insights to make the best of your life abroad. And as I said, meet us on this virtual workshop where we will teach you how to find the right business idea for you. Find all the information on tandemnomads.com slash 185. And if by any chance you're listening to this episode after the month of October 2020, you will be able to find the one minute test that will help you figure out if you're ready to start your business, even if you don't have an idea yet. So see you there and thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode. I hope you found some great inspiration 
and insights for you to turn your challenges into great opportunities.